We did the best thing you can do during quarantine. We adopted a kitten. This little bundle of joy is Penny. We found Penny last week through the Toronto Cat Rescue, and when we saw her profile online, we immediately knew that she was the perfect cat for us. Eden and I have been talking about adopting a kitten for a while now, and since we're spending so much time at home these days, we decided that there's no better time than the present. Okay, to be fair, Eden's been ready for the past two months, and I guess it just took a global pandemic for me to finally come around. Penny is seven months old, loves playing with Kit Kat wrappers, is super curious and very loving. There are so many new things for her to explore in our apartment, but as you might have guessed, I have a few projects planned for Penny. First things first, I wanted to make her a super sturdy scratching post with a perch on top so she can look out the window and survey the room. I finished this build the day we adopted Penny, so you'll see her curious little head pop in towards the end. I guess this was really the second project I made for Penny. The first one was cat-proofing the shelf that I used to store leather dye, glue, and other chemicals. This is just a simple sliding door, which has the added bonus of hiding a lot of clutter. The base of the scratching post is made of two 16-inch squares of half-inch plywood glued together. This is a pretty wide, bulky base and provides plenty of stability for Penny to climb on the scratching post and hang out on the perch. The core of the scratching post is made of two 2x4s glued and screwed together, cut to about 25 inches long. You want a scratching post to be tall enough that your cat can fully stretch out while scratching. I originally wanted to make it a full 32 inches tall, but this seemed a little aggressive for our small space. 25 inches seems tall enough for Penny, and if it was any taller, I think she would have a little bit of trouble getting onto the perch. Eden's parents gave us some carpet remnants from their basement renovation, and I used this to cover the scratching post. Originally, I was just going to use the carpet for the base and the perch, and buy some sisal fabric to cover the post. But I soon realized that the underside of the carpet is actually a great scratching material, and there was no reason to buy any extra fabric. I cut a piece to size with a utility knife and worked my way around the post, attaching the inside-out carpet with wood glue and lots of staples. I made sure to start in the center of one of the sides so that I would end with a nice symmetrical seam. At this point, Penny had been living with us for a few hours and had built up enough confidence to come over and investigate this strange object being built on the living room floor. Since I had stretched and pulled the carpet around the wooden post, it ended up being a little oversized when I arrived back at the seam. At this point, I trimmed the carpet slightly undersized with a utility knife so I could stretch the last bit into a nice tight seam. Being very liberal with the amount of staples I used was a huge help here. Perfect. With the scratching post all done, I was ready to cover the base with carpet. Now, some people say that you shouldn't use carpet on anything you want your cat to scratch, because the cat can get confused about what's okay to claw, and before you know it, your nice rug is destroyed. But I think this carpet remnant is different enough from our living room rug that Penny knows the difference, and so far, she's proven me right. Stapling the carpet to the underside of the base was pretty straightforward, until I got to the corners. 
I started by cutting a diagonal at each corner, but that didn't give me anywhere near the flexibility I needed to bend this bulky carpet around the corners. I ended up cutting a full square off of each corner and using screws to hold the double layer of carpet to the plywood. The perch that goes on top of the scratching post is made from a 12 inch diameter disc of half inch plywood covered in carpet. I laid the disc on some scrap carpet and cut out a generous circle. I then cut some radial slits around the perimeter of the circle to make it easier to bend the carpet over the edge of the plywood disc. Before attaching the carpet, I screwed the disc to the scratching post so that the screw heads would be covered by the carpet. I am screwing into end grain here, but by pre-drilling and using three and a half inch wood screws, I think I made this connection plenty strong for Penny. Then I could flip this whole assembly onto the carpet. I started by stapling the carpet to the underside of the disc, but in the areas where the flaps have some overlap, the staples weren't really holding. I eventually switched to short screws, which made my life a whole lot easier. Before the final assembly, I added some scrap wood feet to the base because otherwise, the scratching post would slide halfway across the floor the second that Penny attacked it. I added some grip to the feet with pieces of an old bicycle inner tube. I always make sure to have at least one old inner tube kicking around. They're just one of those things that are unexpectedly handy and have a million and a half uses. Finally, I was ready to put the two pieces together. The timing could not have been better, because at this point, Penny was getting very interested in what I was building. I got the posts centered on the base and then screwed them together with some three and a half inch wood screws. I set up the scratching post near the window so that Penny could sit on top and look outside. She was intrigued by this new object at first, but being a cat, she quickly lost interest. Being the budding cat trainers that we are, we refused to take no for an answer and were determined to show Penny how fun this scratching post really is. We moved it next to the couch since she was already comfortable up here and it would be a short leap to the perch. Luring her with cat treats and the wand toy seemed to be very useful strategies. Once she was comfortable hanging out on top, we moved the scratching post back near the window and built Penny's climbing confidence by getting her to chase the wand toy up the post. Before long, Penny was climbing on her own terms, and the perch is quickly becoming one of her favorite spots to observe the strange humans and their dinosaur-like vehicles. Oh, hello. Nope. <laughs> Alright, I guess she's just gonna sit over there. This is the problem with getting a cat to do what you want it to do. They just... <laughs> Penny has made our lives in lockdown infinitely better, and she really is an amazing addition to our little home. <laughs> I wanna give a big shout out to the Toronto Cat Rescue and Penny's foster mom, Mary. They have been incredibly helpful throughout the adoption process. They do great work in the GTA, and you can really tell that these guys care. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and if you're stuck at home and have been thinking about adopting a pet, I'm not saying do it, but you should do it. Come here, Penny. Come on. Oh, hello. Thank you for joining me. Hi. You gonna stay still for a second? This is how you lure a cat. You just crinkle a Kit Kat wrapper. 
Look at those ears swiveling. She's like, what's going on? What's happening? 